Hey guys, um, I'd like to talk about mental health in this video. And I know that my mental health is in kind of a state of deterioration. Um, what with my recent unemployment and just the way this pandemic is and the way that our leadership is. Um, we are undergoing like a... a, a um, we're undergoing like a mass trauma as a people and the trauma revolves around our collective realization that uh, our society is structured to abandon us. And it's very difficult because the system that we use and that we survive with doesn't want to admit that that's what's happening while simultaneously seeking to sell us solutions to our mental health issues. Before the pandemic, like the number one was just give people drugs, right? Just give people drugs that instead of solving an issue or a problem, just tricks your brain into believing that everything is normal, right? So instead of actually addressing the systemic oppression of the society, which leads to a lot of mental health issues. Like, instead of addressing the realities of climate change, right? Instead of addressing the serious, legitimate concerns of the populace, uh, we're just supposed to take a pill, and that's supposed to, you know, normalize our mood, or blank our mood out. So that as this apocalypse unfolds on top of us, we just kind of numbly go into it and numbly go through it. And and right now, especially as we're in this pandemic, like, like I, I know for me personally, I was isolated before. Right? I literally was just going from my wor my workplace where I would see like two people a day. Typically the, like one, the same person and then one just like a, a different person. And then back home where I was alone. And I think a lot of people are going through that kind of thing. And I think it's having a profound effect on, uh, on the populace. That's why it's so easy for me to forgive, like, anytime anybody, I find out that somebody was involved in an anti-mask thing, or that there was an anti-mask movement, or any of this kind of stuff, I'm like, ah, uh, I mean, I think it's misplaced, like, I do, but I get it, like, I get why a person would stand up and want to be part of that movement, and to be part of this desire to not necessarily deny what's happening, but just, like, I would love these lockdowns to be over too, right? I would love them to be finished too, but the reality is, and this is this is going to be the hardest pill for us to swallow, I think, is uh, because we are acting so foolishly in the first place, like refusing to do proper lockdowns, refusing to do proper anything, refusing to listen to doctors, refusing to listen to our medical professionals, right? Refusing to actually govern and act in a rational way. It means that we're going to be dealing with this for much longer. And there's just got to come a breaking point where we begin to see and we begin to realize that, like, what's happening to us is that capitalism needs us to be desperate. And as long as they can keep selling products and as long as they can keep that Ferris wheel, like the, the, the Ferris wheel of death and destruction moving, then like, what, what do they care? And like, take a look at how the, the COVID vaccine unfolding has gone, right? Like the capitalists are going to withhold, if they had a cure for this, they would withhold it, right? They would withhold it from us, and they would sell it to the highest bidder. And then once it got to the point where they could no longer 
make like billions and billions of dollars off of the mass suffering that is being experienced by the populace, well, then they'll just sell the rights to some like Indian manufacturer, right? And that Indian manufacturer will then make it for a buck a shot, right? How do we deal with this? Like, how do we deal with the the constant persistent grind that capitalism puts on our doorstep, right? Like, like it's, it's no wonder, like, suicide is up, alcoholism is up, right? Drug use is up, everything is up, right? And why shouldn't it be? Because, like, it's one thing to actually go through this pandemic, you know? The whole globe has gone through this pandemic, right? But coming to terms with the reality that our leadership literally does not care about us. Like, coming to terms with the fact that our system is designed to abandon us. That the structure of it, it is structured in such a way so that when these sorts of crises come about, huge sections of the populace are just simply abandoned, right? Huge sections of the populace are just abandoned immediately too. Like it's it, like without even, without even really a thought that any actual systems put in place that have the appearance of helping the populace truly at the end are just designed to help the powerful, right? Like the Trudeau administration putting in the CERB, like, now that we are here in retrospect, we can see pretty clearly that the reason why the CERB gets implemented is because the rich people are scared. Right? The rich people are like, oh, this, this could really hurt us as rich people. And then once they realized that, you know, it wasn't, uh, that they could protect themselves, uh, then they took the CERB away. Right? Then they dismantled it. And they, because they knew that, oh, well, we can protect ourselves and we can get ourselves vaccinated and we can have medicines that the poors don't actually have access to. So that's fine. Just keep the poor people working and, uh, you know, we'll just continue doing what we do, which is nothing. And like, it's, this I think is, is becoming central to the mental health issues that we are experiencing here in the West. That we used to be able to delude ourselves into believing that we're all in this together, but since, and I'm seeing a lot of it since the election of Donald Trump, right? Like, I used to sort of joke that I actually was quite grateful that Donald Trump got elected because Donald Trump was like the final nail in the coffin for people who used to doubt the way I, I would speak. Right. I, I, I talk this way all the time. Like I've, I've, I've been talking this way for years and years and years. It's only recently that I started to actually talk about it on, on a YouTube channel. And everybody around me would say the same stuff over and over again. Like, oh, John, conspiracy theory, John. I'm like literally showing them a document from the CIA and I'm the conspiracy theorist, but okay. And, and I would continuously tell people like, some bad stuff is coming, guys. Like, bad things are coming. And it was especially difficult during the Obama years because the left went asleep. The left just fell asleep. The left just, like, stopped participating in politics completely and allowed Obama to do things that they would never allow uh, a right-winger to do. And then right after Obama, in came Trump, and I was telling them the whole time Trump is coming. Like... Trump's going to win this election. Oh, sure, John. Okay. Yeah, sure, John. And then Donald Trump got elected, and then suddenly I had a whole lot of credibility. Suddenly people were looking at me like, uh, so, John, <laughs> about these things that you were saying. Mm, oh, okay. Now we're talking. And that period of time, like the period of time before that was very difficult, because I felt very isolated, and I felt very alone. Um... 
And then after Donald Trump came in, I thought, okay, things are going to improve now because people are going to actually be faced with the reality of what they're doing, right? And the reality of what their system generates and the reality of, of what this system does, which is enslave the populace and abandon uh, large segments of, of it so that 10 people can do no work and receive all the profits. The, uh, but we seem to have retreated into a kind of delusional, magical thinking. We seem to have retreated into just this desire to deny reality as we see it. And I see that with Joe Biden's election, right? There's millions and millions and millions of people who are like, oh, Joe Biden got elected. We can go back to sleep now. Joe Biden got elected. Oh, okay, good. Things are back to normal, right? Because people seem to be completely fine with working for people they'll never meet, uh, giving most of their productivity to someone who does no work. Um, people, like, there seems to be a large segment of the populace that seems to think that this is okay and that this is an acceptable way to live. And it's tough being here right now because, like, the pot is stirring, right? The pot is stirring. And once we have these, like, right, like, imagine what would happen if we had people in power who were, like, far-right fascists uh, openly, right? And we, we can't pretend like this isn't possible. Like, we can't pretend like this isn't possible. It's, of course, it's completely possible. It's completely possible. Because right now we have, like, a, like here in Canada, it's a liberal party, but in the States, it's, uh, it's the Democrats. And they're not going to do anything to ameliorate any of the suffering that we're feeling. They're not going to do anything to actually address what we are experiencing. And when people are put into these sort of desperate positions that we are putting our citizens into, into in, 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 they, they, like people don't think rationally. They don't act rationally. They don't like, they, they act from instinct and they act from a, from a spirit of vengeance, right? Like humans truly are only motivated by three things, right? Power. Uh, which is money and knowledge and all that. People say that to me all the time. Oh, well, what about money, John? Well, money is power, right? People are only really, truly in influenced by power, love, right? And that's love of a person or love of a thing or love of a nation. And vengeance, right? And people pretend like they don't understand Donald Trump. People understand Donald Trump. You understand how, why Donald Trump came. Donald Trump was a vengeance figure. He was a figure of vengeance that came out of the populace to completely flip the bird at the political establishment that had completely abandoned the populace for power, right? And that this power is the central argument of the central tenet of what's going on in our society, right? If you can get people working for you for almost no money while you do nothing, you have a great deal of power. And that's what this is all about. And the populace had had enough of feeling powerless and had enough of being uh, abused by the system that's designed to abuse them. And so they said, go F yourself. And they voted Donald Trump. And now we've like we've got Justin Trudeau, and they've got Joe Biden, and they're not going to do anything to resolve this power dynamic, right? They're not going to do anything to resolve this power dynamic. 
they've said so explicitly. And so when the time comes for the populace to go back to vote for somebody, well, they're going to vote uh, from a place of vengeance, right? They're going to vote from a place of vengeance. And they're going to seek, uh, they're going to seek politicians and they're going to seek figures who they feel can do the most damage to the political establishment, right? That's what they want. That's, that's, that's what the QAnon movement is. That's what, that's what the, that's what the mega movement is. It's, it's, it's a, a, a harbinger of vengeance. And they've retreated, and of course they've retreated, but we've retreated into magical thinking, right? Like, and this, this to me is the core of the sort of the, the, the mental, the mental, like we, we can't come to terms with what is happening. And those of us who are attempting to articulate what is happening, I include myself in this, feel that we articulate what is happening and we say what is happening and, and we point it out and then are widely ignored or, 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 or gaslit completely. And that kind of societal gaslighting that I've experienced my whole life, that, oh, I'm just a conspiracy theorist. Oh, I don't have, like, there's, I don't, I, I, I don't have any credibility in what I'm saying when what I'm saying is what is happening. And it's obvious now. And now, it, now it's become so obvious and it's so apparent uh, that the people who are denying it are now just retreating into total mysticism and magical thinking. And the society has been so isolated from each other. We're so isolated from each other. Uh, and the only people who are allowed to have like mass communication and mass speech uh, are corporate entities who are actively gaslighting you. And so it, it spreads this hopelessness into the populace and this, like Noam Chomsky actually said, like he lived through the Great Depression. And he says over and over again, like, yeah, he lives through the Great Depression, but there was always this sense of hopefulness. There was always this sense that everybody was experiencing this all together and that they were going to get through it together and that things were going to improve and that society was going to improve. There was always that kind of sense of hopefulness. And he observes that that doesn't exist right now. And I'm certainly not hopeful for the future. Like, I don't look at the future and see rainbows and sunshine and lollipops, right? I don't see any of that. And, and moreover, I don't see anybody who's actually even attempting to pretend as though such a thing is possible. Right? Even, even the liberals, whose objective is to lie to the populace and convince them that they're actually doing something when they're not right? Like, even the liberals speak in sort of very calm and, and dour terms, right? And they, they're, they're pretty aware that what they're doing is not even close to enough. And it seems to just be across the whole globe. Like, we just can't seem... We, we're just caught. We're just caught. And people pretend as though... That, I, and... People pretend as though this mental affliction or this mental illness that we're all collectively experiencing is something new. But guess what, guys? Addiction is not is a mental illness. And we are addicted to oil. We are addicted to it. And it's obvious that we're addicted to it. Right? We are committing like a, a mass necromantic ritual in order to destroy ourselves so that we can have superpowers in the short term. We're burning the bones of our ancestors in our machines. And we can't seem to stop it. And, and even if somebody were to suggest, like, hey, we should stop. Like, certainly we should stop it on a, on a uh, like, mass scale. That we should ration this stuff. That we should continue using it, fossil fuels for our food production in order to ease the transition. But why are we allowing like Jimbo to get in his big Hummer and like go down to the corner store? What? 
what? Like we're, 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 we're detaching ourselves from reality. And because we always have, we always have, we, 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 we we're desperately addicted to oil and oil consumption and we can't and i'd be surprised if we did like i'd be surprised if we did shake that right like we love oil and we love what it does and we love going to war for oil we love going to war for oil we love uh destroying our neighbors and we love stealing their resources we love that we love that. You know, there's a reason we won't talk about our participation in the gym, uh, the Yemeni genocide, but oh boy, those Chinese, you gotta watch out for them. And everybody knows this is true, right? Like everybody knows this is true. You know it in your core. Like you know that what we are doing is self-destructive. You know that what we are doing is 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 a, a mass suicide. And lots of people are just going, well, well, if we're gonna perpetuate a mass suicide, then I'm out. Right? It's not worth like living my whole life watching the society kill itself. And I don't have a future for myself personally. So yeah, of course suicide is up. Right? Of course people are gonna bounce out. And if we don't address like that, this is what the system is doing. And this is how the system is designed. It's just going to keep going like this. It's just going to keep going like this. And it's going to get worse and it's going to get more aggressive and it's going to get more extravagant. And the society is going to continue pulling itself apart. Unless we actually stand up and say as a people, that the system that we have erected is generating these issues. And it is. It is generating these issues. We've created a system that, like, generates genocide, that generates destruction, that generates mental illness. And instead of actually dealing with people's mental illness, and instead of actually listening to what they're saying, and instead of actually attempting to ameliorate them in any way, we just shrug, hand over billions of dollars to five people who promptly abandon us. And this cycle of abandonment, this, this perpetual cycle of abandonment, is the number one thing that continues this perpetual decline like people my age are like completely suicidal right like that's not something if you are like almost 40 there is this just general malaise there is just this general malaise that exists over you where where you look at death as not something to be feared, <laughs> but as something, something to look forward to. People have, uh, like, I've had a couple of conversations about this, because my name is the Canadian Commie, right? And people say to me, like, well, aren't you afraid that you're going to get attacked or that there's going to be some kind of, like, are you afraid that someone's going to shoot you? Right? That happens to communists. And I'm just like, oh, man. <laughs> Is that a, that's not really a punishment. <laughs> like that's, <laughs> what a way to go, right? What a way to go. And maybe that's just gallows humor, but I feel like it's pretty common, you know? And what always shocks me is just the just the gullibility, you know? I bring it up over and over again, over and over again on this channel. People are gullible. People are super gullible.
They're just willing to believe whatever they're told. And they're willing to just go along with whatever they're told. Oh, yeah, certainly powerful people. They, they, they must know what they're talking about, right? No. No. We're living in a society of grifters. We're living in a society that's designed to encourage the worst people to succeed so that they can lie to us and sell us a story that doesn't exist. And now it's becoming obvious. And people lack the ability to articulate that, right? Like people know, but they lack the ability to articulate what's happening to them. They lack the ability to articulate their own abandonment. And because our society is so dead set on blaming individuals for their, for their inability to succeed in a society that's designed to abandon them, yeah, of course they commit suicide, right? Oh, there must be something wrong with me, right? I can't fit in, right? But, like, that's, that's by design. <laughs> it's supposed to be that way. I mean, take a look at how the school system operates right? If you don't comply at a very young age, you just get pushed out and you get put into that troublesome category, right? Or you're a person like me who got told like the whole time I was in, in school, he was like, oh, has potential, right? Has potential is what they say to people who are smart. They know they're smart, but they refuse to comply, right? I never cooperated with uh, what I was doing in school because I saw school for what it was. It was just babysitting. It was a complete sham, right? It still is a sham. And I don't think that much better of the university system either, especially considering the garbage they keep putting out, the propaganda nonsense they keep putting out. And so what do we do as a people? And I think at the end of the day, this is what we do. We talk about it. We find each other in solidarity, right? I think it's important that we accept that there are people who feel this way and important that we know that there are other people who feel this way. I, I think that the worst of it, the worst of it is uh, feeling like you're in isolation, that the way you think about the world, uh, you must be the crazy one. And the society will try to convince you of that. They will gaslight you that way. They will gaslight you that way to convince you that you are alone and isolated and you must be the crazy one if you are thinking this way. Right? And so it's important that we find each other and that we talk to one another and that we understand that there are other people in the world who feel abandoned and who are willing to acknowledge their abandonment. Because I think that gives us that sense of solidarity with one another. And that sense to continue forward even though things look hopeless. Because if enough of us can find one another and continue to grow and continue to accept that this place could be nicer, <laughs> this place could be a lot nicer, then maybe it will be. Maybe it will be. Okay, guys, I've run out of time. Um, if you've made it to the end of this video, I think, and you haven't subscribed, I think you have to subscribe. Um... I think that's interstellar law. <laughs> uh, that's the like button right there. Doink, doink, doink. Make sure you hit that. Uh, that tells the algorithm, send this run around. Be sure to share this one. And hey, if you've got a buck, right? If you've got a buck, I've got a description in, I've got a Patreon in my description below. That really helps my mental health more than anything. <laughs> okay, guys. Try to do something to help yourself, you know, and just know that I'm out here. I believe you. I don't think you're full of shit. I don't think you're crazy. I don't think you're a conspiracy kook. I think you're doing everything you can. I love you. Good luck. We're going to need it.